Today we're taking a look at the bullwhip effect, a very, very important phenomena in supply chains. It's also known as the Forrester effect. And I may well have spelt Forrester incorrectly there, my apologies. So what is the Forrester effect or the bullwhip effect? Simply put, if we look at the profile of demand in our customer market, we'll see that it varies a little bit around an average point. Um, what the bullwhip effect tells us is when we see that variation start to increase, so let's take a look at this point here where it started to increase, this has a really important impact on suppliers. So what the suppliers see is they're placing their orders and their demand through their supply chain is fundamentally trying to reflect what happens in the retail market. Soon as customers start to see a slight increase in their demand and the retailers pick up on that, their, their first reaction is, is this a new trend? Are we seeing increasing demand? Do I need to get ahead of that demand and start to order a few more products? And by the way, it's going to take me six weeks or four weeks or two weeks or however long to receive those products. So what I start to do is I increase my demand. And so I go from, you know, this variation to this variation. And guess what happens next? The distributor to the retailer may say, well, I'm seeing an increase in the demand from the retailers. So what I'm going to do is re react to that. Now, bearing in mind the retailers have already added on their wish, guess, forecast, that there's going to be an increase in demand over time, and it's a trend, these guys do the same. So what you're seeing is this, what you're seeing here is this, then it gets down to the factory, and this is just a simple four-step, four-link supply chain. The factory sees a significant increase, and they push their production rate up, so they go from here to here. So what you've got at each step in the supply chain is an increase in amplification. A bit like when you amplify sound using a microphone and speaker and amplifier. Um, that amplification increases as we go upstream towards the supplier. So that's the first thing that happens. In other words, each step exaggerates the one in front of it. And so what you have in the end is, you know, if I can draw this, a significant change from here to here in amplification. So that's the first effect that we see. The second effect that we see is offset of lead time or because of lead time. What that means is that I see my customer's demand is increasing this week, next week, the week after, my lead time to supply that is a week. My supplier's lead time to supply me might be two, three, four weeks. So I need to think in four weeks time when my supplier delivers, my customer will be on this upward trend. So I need to adjust for that offset. And so there's also a delay offset here. 
and there's a delay here. Now, it sounds very simple, but what we find is that organizations often have trouble taking into account lead time differences and amplification effect. And what that does for us is that that causes us to see a bullwhip throughout the whole supply chain. So what we see across the whole supply chain, starting with the market here, and we go upstream towards factory, is demand that starts relatively flat, see a little bit of a peak up, just a few percent goes through to the retailer, they see an increase, goes through to a distributor, they see an increase, and the factory goes crazy. So that's the bullwhip effect that we're seeing along this line. That's why it's called the bullwhip effect. So amplification and lead time offset, two characteristics of bullwhip effect. What can we do about it? Number of things is we can listen. This is my attempt at an ear. We can listen to those signals. We can share them. Down upstream. So what this is called is CPFR collaborative planning, forecasting, and replenishment. Uh, we might include it under that something called S and OP, sales and operations planning. Both of these are really where you're trying to get different parts of the supply chain, dyads in the supply chain, to talk to each other. And ideally, what we want to do is share data all the way upstream in the supply chain. And one of, one of the most well-known organizations that does this is Walmart. And so Walmart give their suppliers real-time access to sales data, and they collaboratively plan reorders, deliveries, schedules as we go forward.